welcome back to another episode of Screwball Science. I am Dr. Hairball, and with me as always is my trusted friend and partner, Dr. Lipstick. Word. Dr. Lipstick, Easter is almost here. Yes, and with it comes all the Easter goodies. We got Reese eggs, chocolate bunny, Reese eggs. We got Cadbury bunny eggs, Reese eggs, jelly bean, Reese eggs, Reese eggs, Reese eggs. Sounds a lot like Reese's to me. I like what I like, Hairball. Well, Lipstick, I know everyone's excited about the Easter stuff, but many of those fine folks out there are still digging out from Christmas. They are? I know at my house, there's still a lot of styrofoam, styrofoam left over from all my toys that were being packaged in. You know, I have a lot of styrofoam at my house, too, but I don't know how to get rid of it. Watch this. What? No, what? How'd you do that? Is this witchery? Witch! Wizardry! No, I assure you, this is not witchery or wizardry, and it is not a trick. How'd you do that? Let me say that again. No, no, well, that's impossible. How'd you do Look, look, look. The Easter basket is eating a styrofoam. Nope. Okay, I got it. The styrofoam is fertilizer for the Easter grass. No, sir. Then tell me. Acetone. Bless you. Acetone is the chemical that dissolves styrofoam. It's a chemical reaction that makes the styrofoam disappear. That's amazing. And what's also amazing is what I've learned in the Bible. God wants to make all our sins disappear. Oh, I see. This is about Easter. This is about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. How Jesus came and died for our sins, and that if we believe in him, we can be saved. All our sins disappear. So, really, this isn't about Easter at all. This is about Christmas. No, well, maybe a little bit. I know that all the toys, Star Wars toys this year, are going to be packaged in a lot of styrofoam. Yeah, I know what you mean. I saw your mask. Yes. Hey, uh, just like, uh, <laughs> just like our styrofoam, our sins will disappear. My my sins and your sins. Yes, Easter is on the way, lipstick. I can't wait to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. Me too. Well, we'll see you again next week for another episode of Screwball Science. So, what did you think of that science experiment that you just saw? Did you think it was a science experiment or more of a magic trick? You know, I hope that you never forget that science experiment. I don't really care if you remember the details of it, like how it was done or what materials were used. When you think about that science project, what I want you to remember is how that styrofoam vanished. And when you think about the styrofoam, I want you to think about your sins and my sins, our sins. And I want you, whenever you see the basket, the Easter basket, I want you to think about Easter. And I want you to think about how that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to the earth so that Jesus could offer the sacrifice, that he could die for our sins, so that we could have freedom from our sins and our sins could be forgiven and covered over. Just like that styrofoam vanished we could have our sins forgiven and they could disappear just like the styrofoam. You know, God's loved us so much that he sent Jesus who did no wrong, but came and took upon him our sins. At Easter is when we get to celebrate the freedom from our sins because of what Jesus did on the cross. You might know Easter as the Sunday a ginormous bunny hides chocolate inside plastic eggs. But Easter is really all about how much Jesus loves us and how God sent him to rescue us. Remember how the Jews, God's special family, were waiting for a king to come rescue them? Well, Jesus was the king, and this rescue was the whole reason he came to earth. God had already rescued the Jews once before, but this time it was going to include everyone. So one night, Jesus told his friends about the rescue. Exciting, right? But talking about this rescue was sad. That's because Jesus was going to rescue the world by dying. Kids, every mean or bad thing we do deserves punishment. 
By dying, Jesus took our punishment. Lots of things in life have good parts and bad parts. And just like candy bars are mostly good, as long as you brush your teeth after you eat one, this story is a really good one. Anyway, talking about the rescue made Jesus sad since he didn't really want to die. Thankfully, we can talk to God when we're sad, so Jesus took a few friends into a garden to pray. In the garden, a guy named Judas, who people thought was Jesus' friend, came with some people to help arrest Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' true friends, was so mad he cut off a servant's ear with his sword. But Jesus didn't want his friends to hurt others, so Jesus healed the ear and let them arrest him. Then Jesus was taken to trial. One of the most powerful men in the city, Pontius Pilate, wanted to let Jesus go. But many of the people wanted Jesus to die. They didn't believe he was the Son of God or any kind of king. Even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing sick people and making blind people see, they didn't believe in him. The people were so mad, they started yelling, kill him! So Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus. The soldiers made fun of the idea that Jesus was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed him to a cross. Many people watched, but not all of them wanted Jesus to die. His mother and close friends were there too. Just imagine how they must have felt. Once Jesus was up on the cross, the sun stopped shining for three whole hours in the middle of the day. But those soldiers kept right on making fun of him. They said, if you're really God's son, why don't you just call on some angels to save you? Jesus could have called on angels to save him, but he loved us so much that he wanted to rescue us. So instead, he prayed to God, Father, I place my life into your hands. At that moment, Jesus died. And when he died, the soldiers who had just killed him realized he really was the Son of God. Later, Jesus was put into a tomb and a big rock blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends thought that was the end. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. Don't worry, Jesus could get out on his own. The angel moved the rock so everybody else could see the tomb was empty. Jesus' friends were the first to stop by the tomb. The angel said, He has risen! Which is another way of saying, Jesus is alive! Nobody could believe it! Jesus took our punishment and then proved he really is the Son of God by coming back to life. Now, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the wrong things we do because Jesus already took our punishment. And that's the story of Easter. You know, it was just a couple months ago that we were celebrating Christmas. And Christmas is when we remember Jesus' birth. And as this week, as we move closer to Good Friday and Easter, it's when we remember Jesus' death. You know, the thing about Jesus' death is it's not the end of the story. And I'm so thankful for that. It's really just the beginning of the story. You know, Jesus was a good man. And if there was ever anyone who did not deserve to die, it was Jesus. He did so many loving and wonderful things while he was here on the the earth. He cared about others. He healed people. He fed thousands of people. Everyone who came into contact with Jesus was changed. And the one thing that's most important about Jesus was not just that he was a good man, but he was a perfect man. He had never sinned. He was tempted, just like we are but he resisted that temptation. So he was perfect. And because of his perfection, he was the only one that could pay the price for our sin. If you remember, the Bible talks about how because of our sin, the punishment for our sin is death. But instead of us taking the punishment for our sin, Jesus did that. He died on that cross, not because he did anything wrong, but because we have done things wrong. And when he died upon the cross, he took upon him my sins, your sins, the sins of the whole world, and paid the sacrifice so that we could have our sins forgiven. All we have to do is accept his forgiveness. 
And again, Jesus' death was not the end of the story, was it? No, he overcame death. He overcame sin because he rose again. And because of that, we can receive forgiveness. All we have to do is trust in him and ask him to forgive us for our sins. And trust that when he died upon the cross, he paid the price for our sin. It's not something that we have to pay for ourselves because, as a matter of fact, we could never do that on our own. But God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to pay the price for our sin. You know, in just a few days this weekend, it's going to be Easter. You might get together with your family and do special things. You might get an Easter basket, have an Easter egg hunt, eat lots of candy. Those things are fun. There's nothing wrong with those things. But as you move closer to Easter this week, let's remember that science project. Let's remember how that styrofoam vanished. And let's remember what Jesus did for our sins. How he took upon himself, he took upon our sins upon himself and offers us forgiveness. Again, not because he did anything wrong, but he did that for us. You know, Jesus offers us new life and forgiveness. All we have to do is trust in him, believe in him, and accept his forgiveness. You know, if you've never done that, I would encourage you to talk to your parents about it. Talk to your pastor, your Sunday school teacher, someone that can show you in God's word what you need to do to start your relationship with Jesus. Because he loves you so much that he gave his life for you. And he overcame death. He overcame sin so that we could have forgiveness. You know, Jesus died to wash our sins away. And he wants to offer you that forgiveness as well. I'm so thankful that he loved us that much. It's kind of hard to imagine that someone would love us so much that they would die for us. Someone who never did anything wrong would take upon himself punishment for our sins. I'm thankful for that. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your forgiveness. We thank you that you loved us so much that you took upon yourself our sins, that we could have forgiveness through you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We pray that as we get closer to Easter this weekend, that you would help us to not forget the sacrifice that you made for us. We thank you for your love that allowed you to to give your life for us. We pray that we would always remember what you did for us. We thank you again for your forgiveness, for your love. Help us to remember that in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, as we get closer to Easter, and you might get busy with plans with your family, take time to thank God for what he did for us. Thank Jesus for giving his life, because that is what Easter is all about. Hi everyone and welcome back to another Memory Verse of Kids Song. This week we're still discussing 2 Corinthians 5.17. Do you remember what it is? Have you got it written down? I hope you've been looking over it. What is it? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Let's see how well I've done this week. Last week I messed up a little bit. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new one is here, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Did I do well? I can't remember myself. <laughs> but anyway, I hope y'all do better than I do on this. Y'all take care. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. Well, today's game is called 52 Card Pickup. And I'm sure you've played it before with your parents or, well, with your siblings. Okay, so the object of the game is, is they got to pick up all cards, all 52 cards, in a matter of 60 seconds and put them in the box. If they do, win a winner. Chicken dip. I get paid for that. All right, you ready? You ready? Yeah. All right, on your mark. Oh, it's ready. Get set. Go! <laughs> You have two seconds left. She's <laughs> thinking in the box. Yeah, you definitely have to. It's not neat. It's gotta be neat, y'all. Oh, you stay in the box. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did just stay in the box. Yeah, I wasn't close. Yep, that's it. How much time do I have left? 33 seconds. Cheaters, they win! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you play the game. All you need is 
some cards and some good friends or siblings. And that's how you play the game. And this reminds us that even though we have a miss, Jesus cleans it up. Jesus will make our sins disappear. All right? Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. Say bye, boys and girls. Bye. 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 Go take care. Well, we'll, well see you again next week for another, another episode, episode of Screwball Science. Science.